So as I'm sitting here looking at all these colors and just like completely tripping out like what? what's going on? So anxious, very bad mindset. It's time. It is finally time that I talk about the mushroom trip I had that changed my life. But I had an experience with mushrooms that changed my life and is probably going to positively affect my relationship with my own ADHD, my mo own mental health, the way that I show up in the world, so much so that it's hard to comprehend. A couple of important things to discuss prior to getting into this. One, I am still very sick. I've been recovering from pneumonia. Uh, I've had it for about now six weeks, <laughs> just for fun. So I'm still recovering from that. So if I seem all over the place, that is why my brain is not functioning like it normally does. I'm actually realizing immediately that I can't be wearing a long sleeve top because I'm too hot. So one sec. I went from long sleeves to no sleeves. It's an all or nothing type of world with me. First and foremost, this video is not me trying to sit here and tell you to do mushrooms. That's not, that's not the vibe of this video. The vibe is more so I had an experience that changed my life that I would like to share and that I don't necessarily think that you have to do mushrooms to have this type of an epiphany or realization about your life and perhaps this video can help you to create some of the changes in your life that I have now created in mine that are going to positively impact everything. <sighs> where to begin? Oh, I know where, come with me. Ugh. So this is where that experience very literally began. But before we go to the actual trip itself, I wanted to talk about why. Why did I decide that I needed to do mushrooms? I have been the goody two shoes type of girl my entire life that was uninterested in smoking, drinking, doing any sort of psychedelic drug my entire life. Like that's just how I have functioned for a long time. Over the years, I've become more open to trying things to help elevate my life. I had gotten to a point in my life where I felt numb. I was always kind of feeling uncomfortable and I wasn't sure why. And my goal with doing mushrooms was to reconnect with myself. I was feeling so disconnected with no answer as to why. When I went to go do these mushrooms with a close friend of mine, that was my intention. I sat down and I very much said to him like, this is what I want to be doing. This is what I want to achieve from this experience is I want to reconnect with myself. So those were the intentions. <laughs> so I took the mushrooms. No surprise there. <laughs> so prior to taking the mushrooms, I was feeling extraordinarily anxious. This was not my first time with mushrooms, it was my second, but this time I wanted more out of it. I had had nightmares the entire night prior to taking it the next day about having a bad trip, which I've never experienced, but was scared was gonna be the outcome. And because my mindset was not totally positive, close that up, I was even more scared that I was gonna have a bad trip. I thought I had forced myself into a mindset that was going to elicit a negative response, which I have heard from people, that if you're in a bad mindset, going to take them, it will cause a worse response. So that wasn't great. <laughs> so we started here. I was sitting on the couch with my buddy and we decided to just like put comedy specials on while we waited for the come up. The come up was, you know, usually is expected between like 45 minutes to an hour and then you should be feeling it. At the hour mark, we're sitting here. I'm still feeling very anxious, but I'm not really feeling it uh, like the, the psychedelic effects. And so my buddy suggested that we do a little bit more. We do a tiny bit more. I'm feeling even more anxious now because my fear is, is that it hadn't hit yet and that I was not only gonna get hit by the first amount that I took, but the second amount and I was gonna like really destroy myself. So anxious, very bad mindset. And I expressed that to my friend and he had suggested trying to do something creative. And so we shifted to a new space in the house. <laughs> now, we're going there now, so come on. And that's when we ended up here at my dining table. While you're on shrooms, it's suggested, you know, that you try something creative to like open up that part of your brain. And then we started doing watercolors. And that's when everything changed. <laughs> I found myself finally accepting that I wasn't fully in control and that to allow this trip to do what it wanted to do, I needed to like surrender the last bit that I was holding on to. And so I finally just like felt myself kind of give in to the experience and release this negative energy I was holding on to. And so I just start watercoloring, painting away, and the colors are so vibrant and the way that the water like 
connects to different colors and moves across the page after I've stopped touching it was so interesting to watch and explore and we're sitting here just talking about life and things and I'm coloring and painting and it's starting to really flourish into this beautiful experience. First realization I had was the fact that we had decided that we weren't going to be on phones while doing our trip because I've heard that people have bad experiences by spending time on their phone while they're on a mushroom trip and so we had decided not to. So we'd put our phones away and I was sitting here and I was thinking like man it feels great to be connecting with someone and not thinking about being connecting on my phone. We started talking about our relationship with our phones. I have always been the person that will jokingly be like, I'm super addicted to my phone. Like, yeah, I know, that's a chronic addiction. But I didn't do anything about it ever. I didn't recognize that as necessarily being a problem. But what I realized sitting here with my friend and connecting with him on a personal level and not thinking about connecting virtually at the moment was that I was really able to enjoy his presence and my own presence. And it was this realization of like, I want to do this more. I want to connect with people in person more. I hate the feeling of constantly feeling like FOMO if I'm not on my phone or constantly feeling like I need to be connected with everything always, all the time. I have become so connected to my phone and to this virtual world that I've been, I've been completely disconnected from the actual world that's in front of me. It was almost like I was coming out of a like six month dissociation that I was in. So I went to the washroom and I was a little bit scared that if I went there, I would start to get panicky again. But I go into the washroom, I, you know, do, do the do. And then I'm looking in the mirror and it was like I was looking at myself for the first time ever. But I had this realization that I have lived my life behind so many different masks. I have lived so many different versions of Haley, and I knew this about myself, but I had never really considered, you know, who the real Haley was and who that person actually was that I was deciding to put the mask on because there was a real Haley hidden behind it. And when I looked in the mirror, it was the first time I ever saw myself and was like, whoa, that's me right there. Like, that's us. This is the truest form of self. We're not masking right now. Like, we are really showing up as, as ourselves, and it felt really great. And from that moment, I realized I want to seek that out every single day. I want to seek out that feeling of showing up as myself and not having to like pretend to be something else. Realization number three kind of connects back to this whole idea of the phone, where I realized that I had no work-life balance. And it's hard to complain about this job that I am choosing to do that is frankly a lot easier than a lot of jobs in this world, but it had created such a toxic mindset for me. And my relationship with being online has shifted. It had shifted from being about helping people. It had shifted from being about connecting with people. It had shifted from how I originally started showing up online to this idea of how much money can I make and how many people can I reach? And that was it. It was about the analytics. It was about making this like sexy income that was like, oh yeah, look at this. I'm super successful because I thought income meant success, which it does not. It does not. <laughs> and so realization number three for me was that my job as a content creator was not serving me or the people I initially set out to help. So realization number three was that I don't want to be just a content creator. I realized I wanted to go back to coaching people, to doing life coaching, and uh, specifically for neurodivergent people of how to manage their lives and their day-to-day -day lives better. I don't care about going viral anymore. I posted a video like a month ago about, here's all the ways that I went viral because I thought that that was sick and I thought that was cool and I thought that's what my purpose was and my value was. It's fucking not. <laughs> so as I'm sitting here, looking at all these colors and just like completely tripping out, like what was going on? I had the craziest realization that I needed a career shift. So those were the three realizations. Now, what did I do about it in my day-to-day -day life to actually make changes from those realizations? Come on. Ugh. 
So going back to realization number one with my relationship with my phone, I immediately started to distance myself from my phone and every time I had the impulse to go touch my phone or do anything on it, I questioned why. And frequently the answer was I'm seeking connection. I'm wanting to go on social media and connect with people somehow, whether that is through the connection of seeing people's lives and posts and feeling as though I'm connected to them, or it was to like message people online and connect with my followers and whatever. It was connection I was seeking. The other main reason was because I was bored. I didn't have anything to do and so I would just pick up the phone to fill that space. I made some solutions. If I was seeking connection, I considered what is a better way to do that? Is that calling someone and having a connection with someone I know? Is it making plans with somebody for in the future or right now so that I could fulfill that connection without needing to be on my phone all the time? The second one is so much more uncomfortable to face, which is the boredom aspect of things. I had to fill that boredom doing something else. I would instead push myself to go, okay, what can I do right now instead? And the first few times I had this struggle, it was almost impossible to consider what else to do because I was so conditioned to just pick up the phone and use that as like an easy outlet. Since thinking like, oh, I'm bored, I have nothing to do, what can I do right now? I started putting my energy into things that were nice, things I like liked doing. <laughs> the second one being that idea of masking and trying to connect with my true, the truest version of myself. Spending time alone and off of my phone is actually helping that significantly because I'm not masking when I'm by myself, I'm not. I'm not hiding behind a screen anymore and so I get to see myself more frequently. It's allowed me to start to identify who Haley is. The last one's a big one, so let's move somewhere else. <laughs> this job I have built for myself and felt that I would be really good at, which was content creation, sponsorships. I realized that wasn't serving me. Hi, this is Editing Haley here. I just wanted to say that I cannot stand that my bangs are parted like the Red Sea there, um, and it stays like that for so long. So I would really appreciate if you would just do me the kindness of pretending that it's not that bad. Thank you. <laughs> so the immediate change I made was that I shifted to opening my coaching back up. Haley really was not having a great day here, obviously with the bangs, but my mic stopped working randomly at this point. So I'm gonna give you a little quick synopsis of what I reviewed in this last little bit. Firstly, I realized that fulfillment was what I was seeking in life and that everything I do should aim to meet that goal. Fulfillment can be defined by the individual, and for me, I feel greatest fulfillment when I'm helping others and connecting with people, so it makes sense that coaching is my next step. I think content creation should be centered around the fulfillment of the creator. Yes, listening to your audience will help you build a better relationship with your viewers, but at the end of the day, I think any work or job should be selfish at its core. If you're not fulfilled by your work, I see no value in it, or at least not enough value to be a good argument for doing it. So I'm opening my coaching books, I'm limiting my sponsorships to companies I genuinely care about and would naturally promote in my day-to-day -day life. And finally, that I'm so incredibly thankful to have a community of people supporting me and my growth so that I can support you and your growth. Okay, and as I say that, I've got a friend calling me now, so it's time for me to go. Um, if you made it this far, thank you for the support, thank you for the love. Um, if no one's told you today, I am very, very, very proud of you. Uh, I love you dearly, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you sometime soon, sometime really soon. Okay. Mm -hmm.